Welcome to the RuPaul's Drag Race Recap Show for Season 15, Episode 8, titled Lip Sync Lala Perusa Smackdown. My name is Joe Batanz, and I am joined, as always, by two glamorous co-hosts. First from the podcast, Breaking Down Bad Books, please say... I don't want to be in the bottom anymore. To Mr. Nathan Patrick Brown. Hello, Nathan. Joe, that's incorrect. I'm in my top era. What about you? Speaking of, coming to us from Chicago, Illinois, I think it's the first time in a long time we've ever had a drag queen as one of the co-hosts. She's the glamorous, the beautiful, the fantastic. I don't know if she has an official intro, Miss Jimmy Anti. Oh, I'm sorry, please say. But I'm officially entering my top era. To Jimmy Anti. Hello, Jimmy. How are you? Right, right. I'm good. I'm entering my top era, apparently, so... How's that going oh, Jimmy. for you, Jimmy? This might... Um, well, we'll get him next time. <laughs> Jimmy, I have a question for you, and this might be a little too... I think this is what I wanted to bring up. I said, so I said oh, I want to bring something up at the top of the show, and I don't, off mm-hmm. the air, but now I realize. Are you single now? Am I what? Are you single now? Oh, no, I'm not single. Oh, okay, because there was a lot no, of, no, like, no. Valentine's era posts on your Instagram <laughs> that were like, is she single? And, okay, so she's still very much... Oh, wait, is yes, Jimmy the se- character single? And did I blow your cover? What's going on here? Explain it to us. Um, I don't know either. Um, I have a partner, Hunter. He, mm-hmm. I think we just celebrated, it was our fifth Valentine's Day together. Ooh. Oh, my God. Um... But I feel like Jimmy the character is definitely much more of a whore than is. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, when when the lipstick goes on, there's no telling what's going to happen. Jimmy's a whore. Good point. Now, speaking... Jimmy's a whore. By the way, you know, I, don't, I don't usually do this, but I think it's important to do this for Jimmy Anti, is usually I ask for your socials and stuff at the end of the show, but those are for not drag queens, and I feel there are going to be a lot of people who want to know what you look like and follow you right away and check that out. So why don't you give your socials now? You'll do it at the end as well, but why don't you do it now? Right, right. Look me up so you can have something to um, a visual while you listen to this. It's uh, on Instagram, Jimmy Anti, J-I-M-M-Y A-N-T-I and on Twitter, it's Jimmy the Anti because Jimmy Anti was taken. All right, Nathan, I'm having trouble hearing. I don't know if it's me. Yeah, I couldn't catch that. It... Sorry, Jimmy. No, no. Well, here's the good news. Oh, but you know what? It won't go over live on YouTube. Jimmy, do it again. I have no idea what's going on. I just heard three words that sounded like Siri in a blender. So I think that's yeah. I have my internet connection. I have I have something to do here. I know what we can do. Uh. Oh, that's awful, though. Okay. So for everybody listening, I think I can do this. It's going to record the video, but the live feed, <coughs> I think it's going to go video list. But the, when you when we post it later, it'll be there. I'm going to try that. All right. Jimmy, are you there? Nathan, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Jimmy, are you there? Jimmy died. Yeah, I can't hear Jimmy. I'm going not low. Yeah, we're not hearing Jimmy. What's the time step hmm. here? <laughs> we'll say six minutes. Well. We are in our tech issues era. Yeah, we I are, which is, a, you know, that's a good era to be in. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Jimmy, when you hear us, let us know. <coughs> Let me text Jimmy. Oh, he's he's gone. Oh, Jimmy left. Um, <clears throat> what are we doing here? Oh, I'm texting Jimmy. Do 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 do. Anyway, 
<clears throat> you know, while Jimmy's not here, why don't we do this? And I'll cut it in. Okay. By the way, for everyone uh, at home, I got to tell you something. If you don't listen on page, if you're not a Patreon supporter and you're not at the executive level where you get Just Between Us Girls, mm. we had to do an emergency Just Between Us Girls last night. I was talking to Lori Rockingcamp. She told me a ridiculous story, <laughs> and I called Nathan. It was it was like almost 5 p.m. where Nathan was, and I said, can you go on the air right now? And he was like, yes, and we went on the air. And Nathan, what did you think of what happened? It was the most fun Just Between Us Girls I think I've ever had, and it's oh, honestly really? like – when people listen to it, they'll say that, like, my opinion kept changing, like, every 10 seconds. But since the call ended, like, yeah. I don't know, 15 hours ago, I'm mm-hmm. still thinking about it and changing my mind and thinking, oh, Laurie had a point, Star had a point, because Star was involved. Star is the star of the show. It, yeah. was, it was epic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so we have, you know, inter- you know, Afterthought Media celebrity Christian Ochoa recorded a... Uh, recorded a Patreon ad for us. I'm going to play it for you right now. All right, here we go. Hey there, RuPaul's Drag Race fans. This is Christian Ochoa, your favorite Afterthought host. If you're a diehard Drag Race fan like me, then you'll definitely want to join our Patreon community. As a member, you'll get early access to our episodes so you can be the first to hear the latest recap episode. Our Patreon episodes are also longer, so you'll get even more in-depth analysis and discussion. But wait, there's more. As a Patreon subscriber, you'll also gain access to our Discord community, where you can chat with other fans about Drag Race and many other topics, share your thoughts and opinions, and gain access to the Porn Decor Lounge. Plus, you'll have the opportunity to join us for live shows and bonus content that you won't find anywhere else. So what are you waiting for? Sign up for our Patreon membership today at patreon.com slash afterthoughtmedia and take your RuPaul's Drag Race obsession to the next level. See you in the Discord. Yeah, see us in the Discord. And by the way, if you want to hear that just between us girls, but you don't want to deal with Patreon, go. if you listen on Apple Podcasts, just scroll up, subscribe there. I think it's like six bucks a month, and you get all the just between us girls just the same. I think we have Jimmy back. Jimmy. <clears throat> Hello. Can you hear us? Can you What's hear your me? story there? Oh, yeah. I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, good. Um, okay. Now, what we were saying earlier was... We want you to give your socials so everyone can follow you and do all that jazz. So go ahead and do okay. it. Okay, Slay. So you can follow me on Instagram at Jimmy Anti, J I M M Y A N T I. Um, on Twitter, it's Jimmy V Anti. Uh, and on TikTok, I'm, I think it's Jimmy Anti, but I don't, girl, I don't know. Yeah. Now, who oh, no, knows? There's too many. But now, Jimmy, I want to get some because again, you are the first drag queen, active drag queen that we have had on the show. Well, I've put in the word. Uh, actually, recapping the show. So I want to know what are the because you know this, this has been controversial lately. What what are your ground rules? You must have some ground rules, right? You're not going to be nasty like me and Nathan because you have to work with these girls. <laughs> Ground rules out, as in, like, how honest will I be about, like, my opinions of the Queen's yeah. performances? Um, I mean, I'm going to be honest. Yeah. Working about drag queens is we're rotted and gutted to each other, especially when it comes to the craft of drag itself. We're going to share our opinions. So, yeah, I have no qualms about mm-hmm. um, saying what I think. Unfiltered. You know, but here's the thing, though, especially with this. What did you say? I said Unfiltered. Oh, unfiltered. Oh, God. Because one of the oh. things... What? This guy, it's my connection. I say something, mine. and then it's like three seconds sound... delay. Yeah. This yeah. happened with Nathan last week. Uh, is uh, This is going to sound so good and look so good later. I'm sorry if you're listening to mine. But, um, but Jimmy, here's the other thing, too. <clears throat> is this season in particular, it seems like the girls... Are feel that they're above criticism or recapping or anything. Marsha's come out and said it. Uh, uh, somebody else has come out and said it. Somebody, a couple of them have come out and said, like, oh, you shouldn't, I think, like, Lux, like, you shouldn't be judging what we do. 
Like you should just appreciate right. it. Right. Well, it's these uh, crybaby participation trophy bitches. Um, no, but really, really, <laughs> really, you signed up for RuPaul's Drag Race, and like that's like what it is. Like that's like that's what it is. So, I mean, on one hand, I understand like how overwhelming it has to be for like everybody to be um, having an opinion about you, but at the same time, like make a lot mm-hmm. of money doing it. That's a really good point. Now, here's actually a question I thought of today, and I want to ask you right up front. Is because I've known you for years, and I and I follow you on social media, and you're in and out of drag on social media. So, you know, something's come up, and it and because I know you're going to be on the show. This is it's not even like if it's going to be when. And well, one of the things we noticed is I want yeah. I'm going to call RuPaul at 1-800-R-U-P-A-L-A-A-U-L. Which I'm like expecting Lucy, by the way, to have a more clever answer. I thought there'd be a punchline. 1-800, she spelled RuPaul's name. Yeah. Yeah. No, there was no punchline. It was just like 1-800-R-U-P-A-U-L. Anyway, someone should teach RuPaul the number 911. Anyway, what I was going to do... Does anybody get that joke, Nathan? Do you get that joke? Yeah, the drowning, right? Yeah, the drowning, yeah. Okay. Oh, it's triple O in Australia. Australia. She was on fresh air. Oh, it's triple O in Australia. In the more you know. Well, you guys are weird. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, is there seems to be a thing, you know, the, as we know, the fandom is crazy. Not the Afterthought fans, but the other fandom, the Reddit fandom is crazy. And so anytime a white twink gets into it with a person of color... Death threats, racism, all kinds of shit happen. So when you're on the show, Jimmy, and I know how you are. You're actually quite the little activist. How are you, because you are a you know pretty white twink, how are you going to react to that? What do you, what do you think is the right thing to do when you're on the show and you get into it with you know a, a, a queen of color? Well, first of all, damn... Um, that's, like, this is the, like, I feel like I'm at, like, um, a round table of, like, intersectional diversity, um, at college. But, yeah. but, yeah, no, that is, that's real. That's, like, all, it's, like, kind of been a trope since Aquaria and Vixen, like, really laid it out there, like, yeah. y'all, this is, this is what happens. Um, and it's crazy that even though, like, it's fully, there's been a conversation about, like, this is how, this is literally how, this is the formula it's repeated, um, and it still happens every single time. Um, but I think, you know, Marsha, 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 she did what she could. She was like, I'm not posting on my Instagram until um, Mistress gets hers back. Um, and, like, those kinds of things. Just, you know, actually, like, remember that your castmates are real people outside of, like, the TV show. Because on the TV mm-hmm. show, like, that's what we want. We want to see people being cunts to each other. So we, we don't want to stop that ever. No, we don't. That, this show follows that same model. <laughs> fucking cunt to Nathan all the time. Yeah. All right, let's jump right into it. This week, the Queens duke it out in a lip sync Lala Perusa smackdown in a twist. Anitra elects to save Spice from the bottom two and faces off against Jax in the final round. After a lip sync battle for their lives, Anitra was told, Shantae, you stay, while Jax was asked to sashay away. Ladies, name two things you liked about the episode and one thing you did not. Let's start with our very special guest, Jimmy Anti. Um, how many things did I like? How many things am I supposed to like? Two, Two things, but you can like whatever you want. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I just like seeing drag on TV, as in, like, this is drag that you see when you, like, go to the bar. Like, the, the, it's drag queens lip syncing. Um, and it just feels the most like a real drag show as than like any other episode, except for maybe like the talent shows. But I really love that. Like, it's literally just mm-hmm. people. It's just drag queens lip syncing. Um, and then I also loved that yeah. the pacing got cut down because there was none of You could tell that they had shot it to do that foolish bullshit where it's like the elimination. Mm-hmm. They like fake you out like three commercial breaks before you even find out who won a single lip sync. And so I can see that a lot of that had to get cut out for the pacing. Loved that. 
loved to see that, like, they had tried to pull the whole, like, after every lip sync, we wait to see the girl that comes back. But they had just, they cut so much suspense. Um, and what I didn't love... Yeah. I don't think I don't think there's a single thing I didn't love. I think this episode was done well. It was drag queens doing drag. And um, there was definitely, you know, a little bit of, like, okay, well, Anitra, I don't believe that she lost that many times. But at the same time... It made a good show because we got to see Anitra lip sync a lot. Very good point. Let's go over to Mr. Nathan Patrick Brown from uh, Wollongong, Australia. Nathan, what's your take here? What's your hot take here? What are your two things you like? One thing you didn't. I really liked this episode. So one of the things I liked was that without there being a guest judge, Bruno got to sit in the big boy chair on the panel. And I love that for him. <laughs> Very proud of Bruno. Okay. And I also sure. liked that um, <laughs> there was some free will for the Queens in who they picked to battle against what song they picked. It allowed the Queens to show like who had nerve and who didn't. And it like gives them storyline. So I thought that was an interesting aspect. And the one thing I didn't like, mm-hmm. it's a bit nitpicky cause mm-hmm. I quite liked this episode, but Lulu Laduku still going on about being safe mm-hmm. enough. I've had it enough with it enough. It's really awful. You know, look, Ultimately, lip syncs are fun to watch, so I like that. Two, um, I gotta tell you something. I was talking about this with a friend today. I don't know if Jimmy's been listening this season, but I have n- in the past, especially early on, I was not really nice to this spice person, right? But I'm gonna be honest wow. with you, and I don't know if Sugar wasn't there long enough for me to have my opinion on her, but she seems like she might be a nice person. I kind of love her now. The show. Yeah. Like, I, she seems very... Now, look, I still don't like... Let me tell you two things. I still don't like the persona, and the bitch should have gone home today, <laughs> but as a person, I kind of like her. Yeah, she's um, like a little puppy dog. Originally, what I had for the thing... Yeah. And she, you know, the thing is, when you're doing... You see, Ariel Versace is a good example. She played that same kind of Jersey stupid bitch, right? Ariel Versace carried that into the workroom where I don't, again, I can't speak for sugar. Spice doesn't really carry that into the workroom. She's like a puppy dog is a really good example uh, when she's in the workroom and much more down to earth and real. I sort of really appreciate that. So originally I was going to say that, and we'll get to when we get to it. I didn't really like the rigory of the nature. I didn't really like the twist because I felt not that Jax was long for this world, but every episode these queens have, under their belt is better for them. And Jax was sort of robbed of that. But the one thing I said, and I have my notes here later, when they walk into the workroom, and this is such a basic gay man thing of me, when they walk into the workroom the next day, (laughs) Marsha's at the head of the pack and she's wearing sweatpants with clearly either no underwear or very loose underwear. And her dick is swinging (laughs) so much. It's a very brief shot, but I can spot this shit like nobody's business. (laughs) And I think intentionally they didn't show it the rest of the time in the thing. And I'm like, (laughs) why are you robbing the girls of their Marsha, Marsha, Marsha hog? And that's the, I'm going to change it. (laughs) Schlong, schlong, schlong. The episode. Yeah. Schlong, schlong, schlong. I don't like it. All right. Um, everyone listening later, you know, live, we're having audio issues live with Jimmy. I just want to address this now. And in the recording, you won't have them. That's the beauty of the service we use. And in the YouTube video, I'll post the um, the video that's being downloaded, so you won't you'll see the everything. But if you're, um, but it's gonna be we're having trouble listening to her live. So it might be we're not being dicks. We're like we we smile at the camera and then we just move on because we just didn't hear anything she said. But just FYI, that's why we're doing. It. We're not being a dick to dip to Jimmy and stuff like that. So um, that's if that happens. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. And Jimmy should know that, too. So everything that goes up later will be fine. All right. After all his elimination, the girls congratulate Mistress on her challenge when Lucy complains again that she was not in contention for the win. And Spice announces she's entering her top era. The next day, Lucy is still in a mood. And the girls rib her before Rue enters the workroom to announce this week's maxi challenge. The queens will face off in a lip, in a lip sync Lala Perusa. Rue tells the queens to don their best lip sync assassin drag and meet her on the main stage. The girls perfect their looks and strategize who they should target. Let's start with our good pal, Nathan Patrick Brown. Nathan, 
Any thoughts on anything that happened here at the cold open, at the back in the workroom, basically everything before the theme song dropped? Um, well, I just, I really like this lip sync episode just because it's a nice palate cleanser Mm -hmm. from the format that we've been having for the past few weeks. Like it's nice to have a break from, um, Marsha getting critiqued about her makeup. So I was just super pumped when Rue Mm -hmm. announced that this was going to be a Lulu Rala Paluzu and I was just gagisha. I was gagisha for sure. I love that everyone's (laughs) saying that they're in top errors and congenial errors. I love errors. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so funny that Spice was like, I'm going to be in my top era, guys. And then it was like, next up, a lip sync episode. And you can just tell she was like, well, scratch yeah. that. <laughs> uh, what about you, Jimmy? I really like that we um, are getting to see a little bit like more specific details from each girl. Like Each lip sync is just two of them that we're focusing on at a time. So it feels like whatever confusion there may be because of the fast editing that had to happen last minute. Like we're kind of, it's really helping us like get realigned for the rest of the season. So we know, okay, who's left, what are their strengths? Like it it really is going to set us up for the second half of the season and really kind of finalizing who we're speculating to be in our tops. And I think it's the perfect pacing place to have this kind of episode. You know, I never thought about that because you're right. Because they did uh, Snatch Game really early on this season. And this is, it kind of played the role that Snatch Game used to play, which used to happen around, or usually happens around the halfway point. It's kind of now this is the, it's separating the the um, weaker people from the stronger people, even though Spice made it through. And I will I say, think I think it's a good. we have to address sort of the elephant in the room. Oh, sorry. I think it's a good way to change up snatch game because snatch game has become so like queens aren't really good at it anymore drag has moved like beyond uh impersonation where it used to be much more about impersonation so i think it serves as a better like reflection of what drag queens are doing nowadays as that like you know, determining what the drag queen's strengths are, because it doesn't have, you know, you don't have to force the storyline of, oh, these queens are strong, even though, you know, in seasons past, lots of queens did really horribly on a challenge that we had to pretend like, you know, they all nailed it. And this just, you know, it, we're playing to the, the queen's strengths, which it makes more sense as a TV show and as a competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Um, let's address the elephant in the room. What the fuck is wrong with Lucy LaDuca? Let me tell you something. I saw this thing on Reddit. And I it, I think she thought she was being... I don't know what she thought she was doing. But when she was at Roscoe's, I don't know, was a week ago, two weeks ago. Whatever, oh, I was there. Someone on Reddit said that she said... Oh, you were there. Okay, so Jimmy, you can confirm this. Did she say that she's never felt anxiety? <laughs> okay, well... <laughs> Um, I will say I was there like part of the time. Wait, this is the one with Lucy. Yeah. So that was Diet Di- and Crystal were there. Yeah. So this is the yeah. one where like I tried to get in and mm-hmm. um, they wouldn't let me mm-hmm. in because they said my ID was fake. It isn't. So then I got in like no. during the judging part on. So I really just saw like the drag show that happened afterwards um so i cannot confirm oh, okay. or deny if that was actually said but she definitely was a she was very short she was a large presence and um you know she wants it really bad <laughs> yes so she does we know now let me tell you this so she said supposedly according to reddit that she said she doesn't feel anxiety, which I don't think is true. I'll tell you about it in a second. But if you did, if you, if if she said that, and if she thinks it's real, and if it is real, well, then she just confessed that she's a sociopath. Like, sociopaths <laughs> don't feel anxiety, okay? And I but, I, but she fantasy, does feel though. anxiety. We've seen it. Yeah, I do. Live she gives that. Fantasy. She gives. But like we've the, seen the anxiety. Like Lucy, like the drag character, she totally is a psychopath. <laughs> yes. She does, 100%. And, but what she does feel anxiety, though, because we see her going through the anxiety that she didn't do good enough, or she, and she, but she compensates for it. And what is her fucking problem where she wants everyone to know that she did great and she did amazing and she will not stop talking about it? And even the next day, 
when Jack sort of gently pokes at her, she's like, you can tell she's like, you know, I was being crazy, but I don't see why you guys are making a big deal, by the way. You're still talking about it. And like, oh, my God, this bitch, she can't stop. Nathan, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I just don't know. Because, like, what, three queens are usually in the top. So it's like, I get that you think you did really mm-hmm. well, but do you do you see how Mistress in Malaysia might have been better than you? And, like, like, give me specifics. Just say you thought Marsha was booger boots if you think you should be in the top. Like, don't just be like, I'm so mad, I'm so mad. Because, like, yeah. it's not justified. Um, Jimmy, do you have any thoughts on Lucy there? Um, it's giving very much like the late, great Leslie Jordan in the video where he's like, look at me, daddy, look at me, daddy, daddy, look at me. That one. Oh it's yeah. Very, Watch the twirl. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> RuPaul would have something to say about like diving into the childhood trauma that led Lucy to the place where she's at. If they ever sat across each other for a Tic Tac yeah. meal. Um, yeah. Yeah, so you yeah. can definitely, you can definitely, like, pretty accurately guess what her childhood looked like. Yeah, and that's where, that's where I'm saying she does feel anxiety. She doesn't know she's feeling anxiety. And she's right. one of the people who thinks it's a sign of weakness to say that you experience anxiety. And it's not. Everyone experiences some sort of anxiety. You know, at one point, too, when after the announcement, when they're back in the workroom, Mistress is there, you know, everyone's key keen about who's going to go sing what, and blah, 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 blah. And then Mistress says that everyone thinks Marsha would be easy. She puts her in the list. And, I'm, and I, even then I was like, why would anyone think Marsha would be easy? She's told you she's been on Broadway. She's been on Broadway tours. She volunteered the first day to be the choreographer so the bitch can dance. She shows she has acting chops. By the way, I'm not even a Marsha, Marsha, Marsha fan, but she would have been one of the last people that I would have challenged. What do you think about that, Jimmy? I think that there's a really common critique of her, which is the makeup. And she hasn't, I mean, she's made, she's put on more makeup, but she's not really wearing a lot of makeup. And so I think that's what, like, people are really holding on to. They're like, okay, your storyline is a critique. And so you are a weak contestant. Um, When really, like, anything that has involved any performance, she has nailed it. in the acting challenge, um, getting on, like, literally anything that doesn't involve looking like a clown she's done great so yeah i think the girls are wrong to underestimate her <laughs> nathan what do you think of what jimmy said i uh, agree <laughs> i think <laughs> jimmy we're having trouble hearing you don't stress about it. like i said when we put it together later it's gonna all make sense and look great and blah, 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 blah. okay but uh, just if when you stop talking just stop talking for a while yeah so, okay, so uh, I'm, I'm going to like I'm going to go said, plug my phone in book. because I'm I'm using my hotspot off of it and it's going to die. So I'll be right back. <laughs> I fully okay. feel like I, this is being held together with a paperclip and a shoestring. I have no idea. What Don't worry about it, Jimmy. I have t- Jimmy. Tell me when you're back. What's the timestamp here? Okay, I'm back. Okay, you're back. Now, Jimmy, why don't we take a break soon? But don't you think it might, you know, you can get, there's a Riverside app that you can put on your phone, and then you can just come in through that. Okay, work. I can do that. You want to do that? Yeah, let's do it. You want to do that? Why don't we do that right now, actually? Yeah, let's okay. do it right now. We'll wait here. Just come back into the same room. Um, I can, I can say. I have no idea what Jimmy was saying. No fucking clue. <laughs> <laughs> um, back to Marsha though I will just say like yeah I would never volunteer to go up against someone who was in the Broadway company of kinky boots like kinky fucking boots yeah like there's your hint that she's yeah. gonna be good and honestly yeah. I feel like mm-hmm. if it were me I would say mm-hmm. knowing that Jax has been in the bottom two weeks in a row it's kind of her time mm-hmm. like I know she's a great lip syncer but they can make her go this episode if they wanted to go this episode. And I'd sort of see the writing on the wall. So I would volunteer to go up against Jax because it would show like cunt. It would show me being like fierce, unafraid. And even if you lose in that first round, I mean, big whoop, you'll just get it on the next one. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I would put her as the weak because she's shown all her tricks. Well, I mean, honestly, I mean, okay, let's pretend 
let's pretend we're talking strategy here. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's say we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know. Let's say we're just we're just one of the contestants. All right. Um, if we're one of the if you're one of the contestants, Nathan, they just said you're going to do a lip sync a la Perusa. They told you the rules. They pull the ball. You have all the queens to choose from. Okay. Yeah. Who are you going up against? <sighs> well, it, for for me, I'd have to pick on mm-hmm. who I've got beef with. So, like. With Malaysia, she fucked up not picking Mistress because that's what the fans mm-hmm. want to see. Like, I know that she doesn't... Yeah. Well, she did know. She sort of alluded to the fact that everyone wants to see it and then she didn't do it. I think if you pick the easy target, it you might think it's smart strategy because you're securing your spot, but actually it's just like you saying that you don't think you're good enough to be here. But I'm going to challenge you. Yeah. Maybe Malaysia was thinking TV production, and that's why she chose Marsha, because they had had that beef a couple of weeks ago in Untucked. Yeah, but... So are we that... like, the fans are going to want to see me go against Marsha. I don't think so, because even in this... was it? I don't know, someone asks her and says, what, well, Marsha says, why'd you pick me? And she's like, oh, I went blank. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, bitch. I don't think you did. I think she thought she was weak. They were lying all over the place because they asked Lucy why she picked. Um, did she? Did you watch Untucked? Yeah. Yeah. So people who didn't watch Untucked. They asked Lucy why she picked Spice. And what was her answer? It was some dumb answer. She thought that she'd it pick was... the song that she would want, and it's like, no. Yeah. No, you. Didn't. I don't respect. See, no, you didn't. if it comes to respect, like I, I respect Anitra, like showing that she's got nerve, and it's like it's that if yes. you want to be the best. Beat the be- be the best. You got to beat the best, and it's it's weak yeah. to not yeah. pick someone who you think is going to be good. I completely agree. I, I have very complicated thoughts about what happened with Anitra and Jax. For everyone listening later, and I'm going to keep this in. Future Joe, keep this in. Is Nathan and I are vamping, but it's kind of an interesting vamp uh, while Jimmy fixes some technical issues. So, uh, yeah, so I have very complicated thoughts about Anitra. Okay. Uh, about what she did. Because, like I said, I don't think, I think Jax went home too early. And we'll get into this when we get into each individual lip sync. But ultimately, I also think that um, she did the right thing. This is something we're always bitching about on All Stars, you know? So... I don't know. I go back and forth. See, because I think Anitra, if she... Anitra flatlined since episode one, right? Like, she showed she was amazing Mm -hmm. in that talent show. And then she's sort of been safe. And I think she's really stood out this episode again by showing she's fierce as a lip syncer and she's unafraid. And I think if she were to to Mm -hmm. pick Spice, it would have been such a, like, flop final lip sync. It would have been so not satisfying. So, I, I mean, I don't even know if it... I wouldn't be surprised if every ball was a Nitra in that, in that barrel. Like, <laughs> I think they wanted oh, a Nitra against Jax. we can talk Jax. about that. <laughs> I have theories about that. I have theories about that. I think there's a bunch of ways where either, like, you know, all of them were Malaysia. I do definitely... This is what I definitely for sure think, at least the first round. I think the first round, they took out the balls... Of the queens who they didn't want to go. Like, they don't want Anitra to go first. They don't want Sasha. They wanted Anitra versus Sasha, right? So they're taking mm-hmm. out Anitra. They're taking out Sasha. They're taking out people who, like, we don't want them to go first. We want a Malaysia. To go. I mean, that's too perfect, a Malaysia. Like, if you were scripting it, right? And maybe there were some that they were like, okay, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. And I think they played with it to maybe at the end, yeah, all the balls said Anitra. Uh... Because you're right. Because if you look at the other options, you don't want Spice picking that ball. No. You know? No, because that's not as dramatic. Cause, um, ah! Oh, there we there go. There she is. This is. Perfect. There she is. Now, by the way, for again, for everybody watching later, you will have seen this anyway. But for us, we haven't been able to see uh, and now we can actually talk to each in other. all her glory. <laughs> Okay, yeah, awesome. and, and yeah, now this is perfect. This is beautiful. This is Linda Evangelista. Uh, okay, so uh, where did we leave off? Oh, we left off. So Jimmy, uh, we left off on the. Th- okay, so I have another thing, and then we're gonna get right into the lip syncs. In fact, we're gonna take a break. Is um, 
I love on the main stage, RuPaul comes out and she says, today it's just family. Fair enough. Right? I'm sure Carson and uh, the other, what's, what's the other green, the new one's name? They're just like, what? But anyway. My wife I once again. Then Michelle and Ross don't utter a fucking word the rest of the episode. Yes, it seemed bizarre. Like, I don't know of their scheduling of these episodes. They were just like, let's just go in. We'll do one days of shooting for one episode. We won't even bother with a guest judge. It seems like they threw it together at the last minute. Although I guess it takes a while to get song licensing and stuff. So maybe they didn't, but it felt that way. Well, no, I don't think it was going together, but I do think that maybe Ross and Michelle did talk and they, they cut those out in the, in the edit. Great. Well, they, they so usually the edit, talk sorry, during yeah. runways and things like, what have they got to say? You killed that lip sync. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, why don't we do this? Why don't we take a break? And when we come, oh, before we take a break, I have to, you know, Robert, Robert's in um, like Colombia or Costa Rica or something right now. But he recorded a message for us before he left promoting the YouTube channel. And when we hear that, Robert Mata YouTube channel. Here we go. Hello, Drag Race fans. It's me, Robert Mata, your favorite Afterthought host. If you love our RuPaul's Drag Race recap podcast, you'll want to check out our YouTube channel, where you'll get all the latest live recordings of our show, as well as access to past live recordings, including this episode. Every Saturday at 2.30 p.m. Pacific, Drag Race Recap is live for everyone on our YouTube channel. And the best way to make sure you never miss a live recording? Simply subscribe to our channel at youtube.com slash drag race recap, and you'll be notified every time we go live. So join the party and let's recap Drag Race together. All right. All right, so we're going to take a break, and we'll be back right after this. Oh, we are back with Jimmy uh, Anti from Chicago, Nathan Patrick Brown from uh, Australia. Now, Jimmy, you're originally Correct. from the state of Missouri, which is now becoming like, I don't know, it's competing with Florida yeah. for the most anti-gay and trans state Arkansas is coming into. How is, are you like, yeah, I think, I okay, out so of there, honestly, you, you, like all my this? friends and like the community that like used to exist uh, in Springfield, Missouri, um, we kind of like when the pandemic started, that's when everyone kind of started moving away. And I think politically, we kind of got the hint with like how uh, COVID was handled and everything. Um, and yeah, a lot of people that I knew that were queer, like got out of there before all this stuff started happening. I mean, there were signs that this kind of stuff was going to happen. Um, but yeah, it's wild. And it is, yeah, leading the country in anti-LGBTQ laws. So love my home. But it's one of these, it's one of these things though, where like, is, um, Crystal's, cause Crystal's in the summer of the same town as you are. Is she still going to stick around? What about, what, did no, Daya literally, move? literally all of there? the people What's I there? know that, um, started doing drag in Springfield, Missouri. We got out of here, moved away from Springfield. A lot of the reason a lot of people moved to Springfield in the first place is because of the university. So yeah, like once people started getting on TV and people graduated and yeah, everyone just left. Have yes. you now? In, you've been in Chicago for a couple months now, right? Um, have you already started to make your own little weird drag family there? Because well, one of your drag yes, sisters, I mean, Dig and Michelle, you live with her. Um, and everything, right? She was formerly part of Get Dusted with Crystal and Daya and Lux back in Springfield. Um, she's my roommate. We've lived together since like 2019, so we're we're besties. We're real close. Um, what were you gonna say? Sorry. Wait, is no, Lux, Lux, Lux from the season? Ex, she was featured on season fourteen, oh. actually, for like three seconds. Oh. They didn't give her any lines. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, all right. And then uh, she's New Jersey, but also like from? New York. I don't know where she's from? London. So now that you've been performing in Chicago, which is now like 
because of Roscoe's and everything, and also because it being just also a travel hub. It seems to be like a, oh a hub there's for always drag. like a million really good drag shows to go to. It's crazy. Like I'll wake up and I'll see like all these shows that I miss, like drag legends coming through, like queer legends coming through the town. It's like I'm I literally FOMO no matter even if you go out and have a full night, like you're missing out on something crazy happening here. Um there's so many great drag performers and like mm-hmm. such a huge community here, so it's definitely hard to break into. But um, I love the drag here in Chicago and the community. So cool. Always something to do. Oh, yeah. It seems like a perfect fit for you, even though the selfish part of me <laughs> wants you to come to LA. Miami. But Girl, I Chicago imagine, though, cheap. LA and New York. But I... Yes. Yeah, okay. sure. it's, it's definitely very, like, oh, it is? prices. Like, it's really not that much of a shock from, like, Kansas City. It's kind of the same, like, cost of living with like Mm -hmm. way more things to do personally in my opinion casey well to also like also though even though chicago is a big big hub for drag and it it's you know everything right now it's the center of the drag universe kind of (laughs) just the way weho is the center of the gay universe um is uh but it seems like la and new york you probably want to go there for exposure reasons when you're really ready because you're only going to get like i guess i I guess i'm applying my comedy rules to it like if you move to la too early or new york too early when you're doing comedy it's like once everybody sees your act and they're like well that's the person who does this even if you get better so you want to go there when you're good i don't i don't know if la new york but i don't know if chicago's like that too though Hmm. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm talking out of my ass is what I'm trying to say. Let's jump right back into the show. So now, yeah, now let's talk about these lip syncs. Um, the girls uh, go on the main stage for the Lollapalooza Smackdown. There'll be eight rounds, saving queens one by one until one sachets away. The first participant is chosen by a lottery. Uh, the named queen then chooses her opponent, and the cho- chosen opponent selects the song. Round one, uh, Bruno picks the first... A ping pong ball, and it's coming up to be Malaysia. Malaysia chooses Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Now, when you were dealing with your tech issues, uh, Jimmy, Nathan and I were having a long conversation about do you think the ping pong balls are rigged? Let's say they are. Let, let, let's say you're in this season. Who are you picking? Was ultimately the question. Who are you picking? If you're chosen first, Spice, if you're in the Malaysia role, who would no, you have picked think about it. against? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Like, oh, uh, I really? know, like, I know she has no idea what she's doing. I know how long it takes, like, just to figure out how to move, like, a drag queen who, like, knows what they're doing. Um, and she very clearly hasn't had that time to cook. So, yeah, I could take that bitch. And any, anybody could. Anybody. Any of those girls could, could have taken her. Any well, and yeah, because like Malaysia's not a very good lip syncer, and she took her later. <laughs> but let's talk about this one: Malaysia, Mal- Malaysia, 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 Malaysia versus Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. The song "Boys Don't Cry" by Anita. Now Marsha disposes of Malaysia right away and becomes the first queen to survive the SmackDown. Let's start with yeah, you, Jimmy. I mean, Your I thought think, on this lip sync? I understand why uh, Malaysia thought that. Oh, I can take Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. I mean. She gets a lot of critique. Her storyline so far has been that she doesn't wear enough makeup, right? So I see, like, I see where her line of thought is, like, mm-hmm. but she's just not a weak performer. Like, she knows what she's doing when she's on stage. She's no, She knows how to, like, build a performance. And um, I think it was, I think also it was kind of supposed to be, like, first lip sync out of the gate, like, audience you don't know what to expect because everyone was thinking that malaysia was gonna win malaysia thought she was gonna win so um as a choice i loved the like upset moment um but yeah i don't think kind of also what you said earlier about like is it rigged with the balls absolutely like if they didn't rig it then they'd be stupid because i want i want the drama like i want it to be like it needs (laughs) to be the the pairings that we've been waiting for all season um, it needs to be obvious. It needs to be like, if this was written, this would be uh, bad writing. Like, that's what I want. Drama. High drama. Mm-hmm. Now, 
Nathan and I talked about this. Why do you... Because I was saying it's very obvious to me, like, because M- Mistress was even saying earlier, like, um, Marsha might be one of the people people that the girls pick. I'm like, what? She's constantly, she was on Broadway. She was in touring companies. She talks about how she dances. She showed that she can dance. She showed that she can act. Why would, why do you think Malaysia chose her? I have my theory. I think they see that RuPaul hates her. her. And theory? so they're like, we're going to use this to our advantage. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, I didn't consider that one. That's a really good point. Nathan, what, what did you think of this lip sync? I, I mean, I mean, well, look, I lost a lot of respect for Malaysia this episode. I think she made bad decisions with who to go up against, and I think her lip syncs weren't that great. So she did that thing that I think is so lame, where, like, the lyric is about sleeping, so she did the sleeping hands and rested her head on her hands. It was just, like, so literal. <laughs> and I don't like that. And then yeah. she said... In confessional during yeah. it, she was like, Malaysia, get this leg up in the air, baby. And then the leg went up like three centimeters. <laughs> so it's just like, I think you think you oh, did really well. Did. But for me, Marsha yeah. won it. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay, I'm going to chime in here. You're right. Marsha clearly won this. I actually wrote it down. Like, I wrote, because I wrote down who I thought should be the winner for each lip sync. And Marsha, Marsha, Marsha clearly won it. That said, Lucy does this. Lucy is more egregious about this later. Marsha thought she was serving more than she... I mean, she was... It was a competent, good lip sync, but she was like, ha, bet you didn't think I could flip them all. (laughs) Have you seen... Because you have... Have you seen Anitra and Jax? Yeah. The past few episodes? It was ridiculous. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it was that drag delusion. It was... Trust me, it was a serviceable lip sync. She clearly won, but she was like, ha, Bitch, you fucking whore! You thought you could beat me? I'm like, mm. <laughs> you're lucky that Malaysia chose you. But Malaysia, you know what I was sort of surprised by is Malaysia was so low energy. I don't know why that was. Why do you think that was, Nathan? Well, I think Mistress alludes to the fact that she was keeping things in reserves in case she didn't win, so she could do better on the next one. I'm talking about Malaysia. Yeah. So I don't know if Malaysia had the same thought. Oh. But then Malaysia oh, did well. not have more energy in the next one, so it's hard to tell. No, no. What, n- Jimmy, if you had to choose, who won this lip sync? We're going to do this for each one. Uh, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha definitely took it, not as much too? as she thought she did, but clearly the winner. Nathan, Marshalls, Marshalls, Marshalls for sure. Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. All right, let's go to the next one. Round two. Lucy LaDuca faces off against Spice. The song, Do You Want to Touch Me? by Joan Jett. Lucy LaDuca does just enough to earn her safety, leaving Spice in the smack down. Nathan, let's start with you. Your thoughts on this lip sync. <clears throat> now, Joe, you know I love Spice. I've always loved Spice. I love that doll-loving bitch. Yeah, I've known that. Yeah, you've always been the... Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, but I think I think I switched to... Cor- I turned a corner here because I finally get her. And I've, I've realized that her lack of energy and putting no effort into the competition is actually her serving nerve, serving cunt. So I, I love that she's not even trying. So, and, and, and I do hate Lucy. So, so that does play into it as well. Um, and I thought it was great. What do you think, S- Jimmy? Oh, so, I was just going to say, Selena was also really funny when she was like, I hope Lucy <laughs> loses because she's going to go off the deep end. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think uh, Jimmy, what Spice do you think? obviously um, didn't, like, she doesn't know what she's doing up on stage. But, yeah, just like Nathan was saying, there's something about her that just, like, clicked for anybody that was still holding out on her. And it's like, okay, you're so cute. You are just not approaching this from the same mind frame as everybody else. And it's refreshing in a way almost to watch. So while I don't think you're going to win and I don't necessarily like drag wise think you should be beating everyone. I kind of don't want you to leave because like, I like watching you. It's a lot of fun to have you mm-hmm. on yes. the show. And I like the dynamics that you have with everybody. Um, and yes. yeah, at this point, love, love Lucy. She's a great drag queen, but it is like, I would have, if Spice had won, it would have been hilarious to see her reaction. Um, and she really, like, really, it was Spice. So, like, you really could have knocked this out of the park with, like, how much you really, like, mopped the floor with her. And I don't think she did. So I think it was a missed opportunity for her, even though she won. For Lucy. 
Um, you know, going back to what you said, is there is something that I've turned the corner. Is like, and I don't know if it's stupid or if it is nerve. But like going back to what you said, Nathan, the fact that after everything, when they're before they de-drag, when she's talking about her new top era, Spice does that stupid little bunny hop again, and everyone <laughs> stop doing that. She RuPaul told you she doesn't care, she doesn't like it, and the next day she did it briefly when she came in. I'm all, you know what? Now it's like sort of like gone from like annoying to like come back now, and it's like totally adorable that she's just not giving it up. Yeah, she's, I want her to always do that um, thing. Now I'm going to tell you something. I think that this lip sync, of all the lip syncs we saw, including Malaysia versus Marsha, was the weakest lip sync hands down for yep. both parties. And I really watched it very carefully on the second round. Okay, which by the way, uh, rotating co-host Javi wrote to me and said that he 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 told me why he was watching it. I don't know how people get these references. That Spice's outfit was a reference to a Britney Spears outfit? No. Oh. Did you guys know this? No. Like, yeah, while he was watching the episode, I can actually... I'll show you guys in a bit. But, um... Uh... Is I actually... And I really... Joe, be fair. Do this right. Uh... I was like... I think... It's, it was close. Don't get me wrong. But I think I gave it to Spice. Yeah. I think I gave it a spice by a very narrow margin, mostly because Lucy was, I don't know what she was giving. So I was like, I'm going to give it a spice. Who who, who won the lip sync for you, Nathan? Uh, similar to you, Joe, I think with the song, like it's, it was Joan Jett, right? Like you can be a sort of a bit punk with it mm-hmm. and it's punk to not care. So... And, and and Lucy wasn't giving anything major to compete with that. So I'm going with Spice. Yes. But I think Lucy only won because Rue was worried about Lucy's mental health. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a really good point. I'm sharing I'm sharing the look right now. So this is a, a Britney Spears look. He already knew it immediately. Oh, Which, that's good. And you know, it's great say, that it's not another doll. Uh no, it's yeah. No, but I will say that's very sugar and I don't think sugar and spice have an original look. Like Javi meant, messaged me last week about the look that they did last week was a brat stall, like directly from a brat stall. So I was like, oh, okay, well every look is some sort of like pop culture reference from their childhood or life. So anyway. Uh okay, uh and then Nathan and Nathan, I Jimmy, think who I agree you with chosen? Lucy winning. Um, and I, I only think that because I mm-hmm. love the drama of the whole episode where, like, is this the one where Spice goes home? Like, she's the, she came in as, we're like, what, what's this going to look like? The twin has gone home. It's like, wh- where does this end? It's really not, we haven't seen a mm-hmm. storyline quite exactly like hers. So there's a little bit of mystery as to, like, what's going to happen to her. And she so clearly, like, this is not her challenge. She could easily go home. So... We would lose some of that tension if she went home no. immediately. So I, I think it could have gone either way. Like, we could have used this as an opportunity to, like, really let us know. Um, but I'm glad that she just kind of let us know so we could at least have some of that suspense. Yeah, I agree. And we'll come back to this, even though I probably won't. So I'm going to give the headline now. I thought it was really refreshing because the other girls did not do this when they made it by the skin of their teeth. That she came in, she's like, I thought I was gone. I thought I wasn't <laughs> going to see you guys again. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? Go Spice for owning it. Why am I now the biggest Spice fan? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Next, lip sync number three. We have Lux versus Selena. Um... Let me see here. Luxmore London goes head to head with Selena as titties. The song It's All Coming Back to Me Now by Celine Dion. Great choice by Selena to go with that one. After battling it out, Selena is named the winner and joins Lucy and Marsha in the workroom. Let's start with you, Jimmy. Your thoughts on this performance by. Uh, so, out of the two of them, Lux based on Selena. what we've seen so far, I was like really rooting for Lux. I wanted to see more from Lux. Um, and Selena was there. So, I was disappointed <laughs> when. Lux kind of didn't do anything. She really didn't give the song. Um, and happening, I was like, okay, it's clear that this is not Lux's moment here. 
Um, and so I was really excited for this episode and, and we get to this third lip sync. And so I'm like, okay, so when are we going to see some good lip syncs? So that I'm starting to get worried at this point. Yeah. Yes. I was too. Nathan, what about you? I thought this was a great episode for Selena, maybe because she didn't have a runway she could butcher, but I thought she really shined in this lip sync. I thought it was fun. I also enjoyed Lux, but the thing with Lux, I find her so endearing. I thought the best part of Lux this episode was when she didn't win and she said, I'm a little very gagged, (laughs) which I just want to incorporate into my vocab. Like, I'm a little very. (laughs) So funny. Uh, Um... Yeah, I mean, I did think Selena won, but it was all Selena knew the song. She had done it many times in the clubs. She worked as not really a a smart choice to do a song that wasn't really a Lux song. And yeah, I mean, it was a a pretty simple win. And uh, not, uh, well, for me, I had Selena as the winner. Absolutely. And as I love Lux, and what I love even more than her is seeing her upset and bothered. And so really, I was happy with the result because Lux was very upset about it. (laughs) <laughs> Nathan? Yeah, I thought Selena won. Um, and one other thing I noticed, just on the Lucy is annoying front, um, did you notice that when they were watching backstage, Lucy's like, my eyes are completely on Selena, but the whole time she was staring at Marsha like, for three seconds. And I was like, no, your eyes are on Marsha, bitch. Yeah. Ugh. Uh, all right. Uh, next we have for lip sync number four, we have uh, Mistress versus Jax. Uh, Mistress faces off against Jax. The song Tell It To My Heart by Taylor Dane, which if there was going to be a um, a greatest hits album of songs that drag queens do, I feel this song is going to be on there, on the, the uh, went up that for album. The song like, especially old school, like, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. went to the Oh, you, you saw it at a bar. Oh, I want to talk to you about that in a bit. Um, much of the safe girl surprise, Mistress joins them in the workroom and books her spot in next week's episode. Let's start with you, Nathan. Your thought on Mistress v. Uh, Jax. I thought it was quite humorous for Mistress to set the narrative that she wanted to pick the person that she thought would pick the song that she wants. And it's like, mm, I just think she was looking at Anitra, Sasha, and Jax, and she thought Jax was the weaker one, but she didn't want to admit that. So she's, yeah. so she's come up with this Shangela esque yeah. concoction. So funny. Um, What's even enjoyed- more ballsy is then later she, conf- she, she accuses the other queens of just doing what you just accused her of doing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But no, I enjoyed it. I think I enjoyed Mistress more, maybe because, I, I mean, what Jax does is incredible. What, how she moves her body is incredible, but we have seen it. So, yeah. All right, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy said, Jimmy? nope. <laughs> Jimmy was really pissed at what you just said. <laughs> I'm going to be up to 1 a.m. editing this thing. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Anyway. What time stamp here is it? 103? <laughs> the timing of that. <laughs> well, luckily now it's just an app, though. And, you know, in, in Jimmy's defense, the app is really buggy. Mm. So was my um, connection really bad last week? It felt a bit bad. Yeah, I don't think it's great right now either. Oh. We should... Oh, there's Jimmy. Oh, girl. Oh, wait, is Jimmy on a computer girl. now? Now you're, on a, yeah, now you're back fo- on a computer? My phone overheated, so... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I know, this, this is, is crazy. like... No, this is literally insane. Okay, it, but anyway. Riverside is telling me that you have Riverside open in other tabs. Can you close the other one? Uh, yeah, I, that is a fact, and now it's not. All right, yeah. And if you could close... Are there any other apps open? That can sometimes affect things, too. Um, I my computer was freaking out before I got on this, believe it or not. So I, I believe tried it. to close things out. Yeah, <laughs> right. Okay. Hopefully the hopefully this works. All right. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. So wh- wh- where did we leave off? Do you know? Wait. Now it says you have um, to open another tab again. I. I legit, I don't know. Okay, don't I'll really just ignore really it. I'll just ignore it. It's um, Jimmy's turn to comment where, where on we Mistress vs. Jax. Okay. All right, Jimmy, where are, where are you in this Mistress vs. Jax? 
so right when like we heard the song selection uh, at the bar, everyone went wild. We knew what we were in store for because Mistress and Jack. So we were finally going to get like the lip sync that this episode really had promised us. Mm-hmm. Um, and it didn't disappoint. I, I, I literally, I was getting my life for the whole lip sync. Um, and it was just, it was pure drag. It was like drag, drag, mm-hmm. Texas drag. And it yeah. was so good. Yeah, it really was, unlike the other good lip syncs, and I wrote this down, it was really a case of charisma versus stunts, you know? Yeah. And and it was like, what's going to be the – she mistress had all the charisma, none of the stunts. She <laughs> did the Eureka pussy hump, stage hump, you know? And then – but Jax is – Jax did like a weird-ass, like, midair flip and shit like that. And um, once again, whenever Jax lip syncs, I want to have – crazy sex with Jax. Thank you. I don't know if Jax listens. Um, but for me, I have Mr. Says the Winner still. I think Charisma won because we've seen it from Jax before. Jimmy, what do you think? Yeah, Mistress won and um, really just gave us the best lip sync we had seen so far. Yeah, and honestly, that was just like, such that was a strong lip sync. It's up there in terms of like Drag Race as a franchise. Um I just think she has a very unique voice and perspective as a lip syncer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then she has the charisma and just, yeah, she ate that shit. What about you, Nathan? I Who agree, won Mistress One. And I think it's odd that we're all agreeing this, but then when Mistress goes back mm-hmm. into the room, the other girls are like shocked. What did you guys think of that? What a oh, they're great better. transition. They're better. What a great transition. Yeah, they go into the work and they're, everyone's like super shocked, which. If anything, I thought it was close. I don't know why they'd be so shocked. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was and really, why, really weird. They're, not, they're in no place to be talking that kind of shit after they all just barely won their lip syncs. Given some boring-ass lip syncs. Yeah. So they think and they're going to read after Mistress did what Mistress did? No. Yeah, and that's what, that's what I kind of love about Mistress is Mistress then calls them out on it. Mm-hmm. And then this Marsha, 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 who's been talking shit on everybody the whole time because she was the first one in, she's like, you're going to think I wasn't one of the strong ones? Well, she can go fuck herself. And I was like, holy shit, Marsha, leaning in on that. And I think Mistress made a good point about saving the stunts for later, if that's what she really, I mean, how many stunts, exactly. you know, does Mistress really have up her sleeve, you know? I also, I'm like, I didn't need, I didn't need a stunt she gave everything that i needed to be given like i wouldn't ask for anything more from that song Mm -hmm. i mean she did a tear away that's not really a stunty song it was drag (laughs) yes so this is what i want to talk about jimmy i didn't know you i don't know why i'm surprised by this but you were at a a live viewing party of it what was based on what we've seen so far based on what we've seen so far because especially the next one i'm gonna i want another reaction what was the audience reaction to the episode thus far? They were living for, obviously, Tell It To My Heart. Were there any other moments that you remember that they were really here for or against? Um, so I think, yeah, I think we were all kind of in the same boat when we were, like, watching the first couple of lip syncs. Like, okay, it's okay. And, like, who do we think won? Okay, whatever. Okay. Like, really waiting to get down to the good lip syncers. Which- yeah. They did it beautifully, the producers, like, yeah. leaving these lip syncs as the last two lip syncs, um, really building up the suspense. And, yeah, we, the crowd went crazy, because when it got down to the first of all, when you see, like, who's left, um, you're like, oh, okay. Um, and, yeah, I think the last the last two lip syncs... Um, like the first round of lip syncs, people just went absolutely crazy for. And then when everyone realized that it was Anitra versus Sasha, oh, oh, wow. That was probably like people were, you know, the gay gasping was off the charts. Yeah, so let's get actually lip sync number five, Anitra versus Sasha. Uh, let's start with you, Jimmy, actually. I think we're going to start with. Uh, what were your, yeah, Sasha, Sasha and Anitra square off in the final lip sync of round one. The song, I'm in love with a monster by Fifth Harmony. Sasha reigns supreme, sending Anitra in Anitra. Who's Anitra? Anitra sounds like a Godzilla villain. Mm. Anitra into round two. Jimmy, what were your thoughts? You were there at the live club. What did you think? Tell us all about you thought about this lip sync. So, first of all, this was like, this was the matchup that was, you know, being gossiped about and talked about. Like, imagine seeing these two girls together. So, I'm very happy that we got it. 
and they they delivered despite getting stuck with a questionable song. Like they they both did great, especially uh, Anitra going up against Sasha Colby because um, I mean I think any drag queen performing with Sasha Colby like that like. I can't even begin to explain how terrifying that would be. I think I remember Willem talks about how she would always put Sasha Colby last so nobody had to go after her. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, like, I would just be so intimidated. So that was so impressive that Anitra really held her own um, and gave a lip sync that it wasn't it wasn't one-sided at all. So that was really impressive. Um, even, yeah, didn't like the song, but I loved the lip sync. Nathan? I also loved it. I think if it was a regular lip sync for your life, it would have been a double Shantae. I think they both did great. I'd probably give it the edge to Sasha just for the butt jiggles, which was enjoyable. But her nature was amazing. A hundred percent should have been a double Shantae. This is part of the riggery because they wanted to do that stupid twist at the end and force. Because, yeah, that was a double Shantae. I mean, oh, yeah, they could have just done a double. Some- yeah, yeah. <laughs> it could have done a double, and it would actually made the numbers work. And what's funny is, it I don't know why I think it's you know I think it's an iconic lip sync. It reminds me a lot of that lip sync between Tatiana and Alyssa Edwards from All Stars Two, or that mm. Rihanna song. What was the Rihanna song again that you did? She was Shut Up and Drive. Shut Up and Drive. Yes. Yeah. And. Um, it, to me, it, it reminded me a lot of that lip sync where it almost seemed like, yes, they were competing, but also coordinating in a weird kind of way. Uh, it was like a language being spoken between them. It was, it was a very, very special lip sync. What was the reaction in the bar, Jimmy? Okay, it was the it was the most reaction probably to anything that's happened all season. It was definitely like this was finally our sporting event moment. Like this yeah. was this was actually living up to like. You know, people say Drag Race is the Super Bowl of drag. Yeah. This was this was the night that like the fans were really going crazy because I mean it was yeah it was a wild mashup and people were every moment every hair flip every booty jiggle I mean plug your ears because gay people were screaming namely me. <laughs> uh, all right, now so that was the end of round one. Then we went to round two where it was the people who had lost lip syncs went against each other. Round six. Uh, the losers from round one, Malaysia, Jax, Lux, Anitra, and Spice remain up for elimination. The bingo cage of fate chooses Malaysia, who selects Spice to join her in the lip sync. The song, Don't Go Yet by Camila Cabello, in the end, <laughs> <laughs> Malaysia earns her spot in the workroom sending Spice to the final lip sync. Let's start with you, Nathan. Um, okay, so, again, I think, I'm, I'm, I'm just... just sounding her with a drag queen dying. I was a bit gagged by that. I was gagisha for sure. Um, yeah. I, again, I'm disappointed with Malaysia and I am just falling in love with Spice. I love Spice's cruise ship dancing. And I just think it's so funny when Spice picked the song, she th- <laughs> but Malaysia wouldn't know the words. Then she realized mid song that she also didn't know the words. <laughs> it's fucking classic. Yeah. That's why I'm loving her. That's why yeah. I was like, I love this fucking bitch. Yeah. Yes. I love her. A peak drag race um, moment. Yeah, what did you think, Jimmy? What did you think of this lip sync? Yeah, I think it was camp. It was, yeah. this is why drag race is a show. Yes. Um, the, I mean, yeah, just really funny. Uh, and also, I think that it's interesting. Malaysia definitely made it through the challenge, but uh, her reputation is not unscathed. I feel like she's been bumped down a little bit after this episode. So, yeah, not a good showing for her. So I'm interested to see what ends up happening with her after this because, yeah, it's got to hurt after what she went through. Yeah, who do you have, what, you know, because, God, this was a tough one for me because Spice doing that conga line move was 100% the definition of camp. But... um <laughs> And then not knowing the words when she, she chose it because she thought Malaysia wouldn't know I the words. I think that's what it is. I think that's yeah. like the, that was like the final thing. Like, okay, well, you chose the song. Yeah. So <laughs> no excuses there. But I still have – I don't know why. I still have Malaysia as the winner. But even now I'm thinking like, gosh, again, it should have been Spice. I think Spice was robbed strangely in this one. Nathan, what do you think? 
I'm the exact same. I think Malaysia won, but I, I really, <laughs> there's something about Spice that makes me think she was brilliant. <laughs> yeah. What about I you, Jim? I think we all lost. Yeah. Oh, or won. I'm not quite sure. Uh, not quite right. sure. Depends on how you look at it. Yeah. Wow, right. Joe Batan's being glass half full. Okay. You know what? Ever since Taylor sailed away, now it's a much more positive, youthful <laughs> show here. Not youthful. Um, yeah. All right. Lux and Nitra, round seven. Lux and Nitra and Jax remain to battle it out in the lip seventh lip sync. The song The Right Stuff by Vanessa Williams. RuPaul selects Lux as the winner, and she happily heads to the workroom. Let's start with you, Jimmy. What were your thoughts here? Um, sorry, a train just went by, and I did not hear what you said. Um, I was just talking about round seven with Lux, Anitra, and Jax versus each oh. other, and what do you think of this lip sync? Okay, so first of all, I'm like, okay, three people lip syncing at once. This is so they can do whatever they want to do with the outcome and the result of this immediately because you it's hard to judge two people lip syncing against each other and then you add in another person and yeah it's like are we really judging this um yeah i think there probably should have been uh two winners again but we you know they're trying to take us to a good conclusion to the episode so Mm -hmm. of course there wasn't um it was uh lux won this one right yeah she won Mm -hmm. yeah Okay, so, yeah, Lux won this one, and I think we kind of knew she was going to make it through this episode. Like, I I was never worried about Lux in this episode. Um, So it kind of just felt, like, obligatory almost. Like, okay, this has to happen to get to the finale. Um, So I wasn't thrilled about this one, honestly. Nathan? I thought Lux and Anitra were fantastic. Anitra, like, usually I would hate when someone does the same gimmick over and over again, but Anitra could duck walk every lip sync and I'd be fine with it. I'd be happy. I'd be well fed. And I think I Lux... Wouldn't. <laughs> well, and then I think Lux, uh, she is brilliant with these quotes. When she said that she was how they say robbed, I, I laughed. I just love her pattern of speech. And I think Jack Jack's faded into the background just because she's short. I don't think she was bad. I just think she was shorter and the eye went elsewhere. That's what I think. Yeah, I was thinking a lot about this and this lip sync is where I started to think about this. Is the problem with this format, the way they're doing it, is because they're not because they're not because they're trying to boil it down to a loser and not doing an elimination to a winner, what you're having is a lot of mediocre queens made it through early on. And so the two actually bad people were Malaysia and, and uh, Spice. They go head to head. Malaysia, I guess, wins that one. Spice is left. But these three queens are genuinely very good lip syncers. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, you're in the bottom, but you're not really in the bottom. Like all three, I thought all three of these queens did a great job. Yes, yeah, somebody has to go home. I don't think I would have chosen Lux to be the winner. I think I chose Anitra, actually, to be the winner. But again, for storyline reasons, they're like, yeah, well, Lux is going to go through. And so she gonna she gets a pass here. Um, and then finally, we... Oh, Jimmy, did you go yet? Did you talk? Yes, I did. I okay. wasn't a fan of this one. Um, okay. What did you guys think of I, Michelle look, at the end saying, come on, seduction? <laughs> what did that mean? That's the first time said anyone said seduction in 10 years. Yeah. Since she last brought it up. <laughs> yeah. She wasn't even an original member of seduction. Wasn't she? Thank you. No. No, they brought her in later. She came in later. All right. The final round. In a twist, the queen who is chosen by the bingo cage will choose one of the other two to send to safety. Anitra's ball is chosen and she saves Spice, leaving Jax to join her in this week's Lip Sync for Your Life. The song... Finally, by C.C. Peniston. In the end, Anitra wins the final lip sync and Jax is asked to sashay away, leaving nine queens in the race. Let's talk about this one. Um, let's start with you, uh, Nathan. Your thoughts here on this uh, on this lip sync. Yeah, I said earlier that I wouldn't be shocked if Anitra's name was on all three of those balls, but putting that aside, I think she made the right decision in taking on the bigger threat. I think that was strategically quite smart. 
better for the show. If it was just in each of us spices, a showdown, it would have felt unsatisfactory. So I, I, Jax was up against it. There was nothing she could have done. She was always going home this episode. So it was a, a bit of a, a bum episode for, for Jax, but what could she do? Jimmy? Yeah, I think it feels like whether it was the fairest thing to happen, I think this feels like what, for the last few episodes even, we've been moving towards was Jax's elimination. And I think Anitra like fully was clued in on that and she knew that it was like her job to send Jax home. And so, you know, she did what she had to do. She picked up on it. And um, just like I think this was a bad episode for Malaysia, I think this was finally a good episode again for Anitra for the first time since the first episode. So um, I'm happy to see more of Anitra. I'm happy to see her success. And um, I hope that she's rewarded for doing well, despite, you know, probably should have won her first lip sync. Yeah, very good point. But you're right. They had to keep Anitra around. They didn't want a Valentina problem. Where, like, I, I don't think... I mean, I think Lux is a very good lip syncer, but going up against Jax, that might have been a tougher one that the producers were, were, were that the producers would have been comfortable with. That could have been too close. So if you need someone to go in there and sort of, like, close out, seal the deal, you're going to do Anitra choosing who she does that. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, I was talking earlier about this is what we all... You know, it makes me mad because, in fairness, Spy should have won the, been the one that went home. Mm. But this is also something It's the same thing when Naomi sent home Manila Everybody was super pissed But that's what we're always bitching That no one does in All-Stars You know So it's like Why don't they send the strongest one home And then Even though Mal- Manila, uh, Manila wasn't very strong that season But Naomi sends Manila home And everyone got pissed off And it's the same thing here Where I was like Well Anitra did the right thing But it's just like I don't know Also why was Anitra crying in the confessional she was like, oh, I didn't notice she was like, crying. Was like, Finally. And I was like, calm down. I thought it was a bit thing. rude. By the way, like, I love ahead. how she duck walked off, but Jax had to stand there crushed and everyone's laughing at Anitra's duck walk. Like, how humiliating. Yeah. Amazing. Like, oh, quack, quack. Rubbing it in. Also, too, like, they couldn't have the girls come out and say goodbye to Jax or Jax go to the workroom and say goodbye. Like, yeah. She just had to walk off by herself and say that Cold, random hard ass thing. elimination. Yeah. yeah. Rough one. Yeah. So, uh, all right. Any final thoughts on the whole episode as a whole? Jimmy, any final thoughts here? I really enjoyed this episode. I thought it was really entertaining. Lots of drag. Um, my favorite performance was probably Mistress. All I right. Think, yeah, oh, I yeah. think she was the most memorable. That's a good question to ask you right here is, because we haven't had you on this season, who are you liking, who are you not liking? Um, well, as everyone says, obviously Sasha Colby. Um, I think, yes, she's like already a finalist. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of like when they brought Bibi Zahar Benet on and she was automatically, for All Stars, yeah. she was automatically going to be a finalist, just part of the contract. I feel like yeah. it's the same thing with Sasha Colby. No way you bring Sasha Colby on and don't take her to the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also I really love Mistress. Um, it, she's really impressing me and I just love like the high drag just lots of makeup lots of costume knows what she's doing on stage um, and then other than Mistress I, I love Lux I mean she's a meme machine she also just like knows Drag Race so she says, pulls out the most obscure quotes from Drag Race mm-hmm. I love that um, so yeah Lux, Mistress and Sasha are my, are my tops alright very good Nathan do you have any final thoughts have you said them all? no that's all I have one thing to say. Um, you better work. But also, <laughs> they all go back into the workroom. And Malaysia goes, cheers, top nine. I'm like, who's cheersing a top nine? <laughs> I know. But when you start with 16. <laughs> That's true. It's a good point. But like, they're like, God, me- they're like, we've been here a month. <laughs> We've only seen like four minutes of it, but y- yeah. in their minds, even they've been on our TV screens for like six hours longer. Like, yeah, shit. Nothing's point. really nothing's. It's like this is a normal. This is like how many cast members were on season eight. I know you're right. Oh, yeah. mean, season eight would be like done now. You're right. And RuPaul said like this is the halfway point. I'm like, oh my god. The well, point. they're gonna bring someone All right, back, uh, right? Jimmy. No, I don't think so. Or we'll have a non-elimination. Why do you think they bring someone back? 
I don't know. Well, there's going to be some sort of I drama. think we'll have a non-elimination. Yeah, I think I think after last season with everything that was happening, the all the non-eliminations, the all, bringing two people back, you know, for I think with all that they're like this season trying to like reform mm-hmm. that a little bit. It's and, chocolate. But I think I think I think you're right. Yeah, I think we will get one like maybe non-elimination something. Okay. Hmm. All right. Well, Jimmy, give your your socials and everything one more time. Okay. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Jimmy Anti. That's J I M M Y A N T I, and on Twitter at Jimmy the Anti. All right. Perfect. Uh, all right. Well, that's going to do it for this week's episode of RuPaul's Drag Race Recap. Be sure to join us next week and every week as we continue to discuss, dissect, and deconstruct each brand new episode of. RuPaul's Drag Race Season 15. So, for Jimmy Anti, Nathan Patrick Brown, and uh, myself, sashay away until next week. Thank you for listening to Drag Race Recap. Have something to say? Leave us a voicemail at speakpipe.com slash afterthoughtmedia. You can also email us at dragracerecap at afterthought.media. For more Drag Race and LGBTQ content, support us over at patreon.com slash afterthoughtmedia. This podcast was produced by Luke Stamen and Zach Birch. Nathan Brown has two other podcasts. The first is Breaking Down Bad Books, and the other is Bravo Bravo Effing Bravo. You can find those podcasts wherever you get your podcasts. You can also follow Nathan Brown on Instagram at NathanBrown90. Follow Joe Batance on Instagram at Joe Batance. Special thanks to these expensive tier Patreon supporters. Alex S. Anonymous. April Pacheco. Astute Girl. Brad Coley. Carter McKinnon. Corinna Williamson. Deck Head. Doofus Maximus. E. Smith. Elizabeth Timmer. Emma. Humble Pie. J. Thomas Plank. Jesse Harris. Lauren Eckert. Lucy Carrasco. Luke Stamen. Mike Yeager, Nicholas Springham, Nikki Baker, Poppy Woods, Ricardo Herrera, Robert NYC, Sarah Yu, Robin Egenberger, Tom Bombs, Travi Cosmos, Troy Anderson, Zach Nelson. Drag Race Recap is an Afterthought Media podcast.